Just talking about the summer league overall, man. You know, uh, just understanding what it is first and foremost. Something that we talked about over and over, right? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, looking for signs. You know, what I'm saying looking for uh, flashes. That's what that's what we're looking for in summer league. You know, yep. the competition level is the competition level, but you're looking for flashes. And I was talking about Holland, and you've seen him progress game to game. You even seen him taking shots. You know, even though they weren't falling all the time, he was taking them from the outside. Shot 29% overall in summer league. Um, right. Knew that. We knew that drafting him, right? So uh, that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to be in the gym. He's going to be working on his jump shot. Yeah. The ability to get to the basket, take contact, absorb it, and still make shots was the most impressive thing that I've seen from him in the summer league. What do you think? So this is kind of what he looked like this summer league. He averaged 18 points, seven rebounds, two assists, steal and a half, block on 40% from the field. I think you mentioned that, and 23 from three. He didn't play great the first couple of games for me, but I do think that his ceiling is like ridiculously high. He just looks like a player to me who hasn't even tapped into his ability yet, bro. Like when I watch him, he's so raw. Um, but the things that he randomly does and flashes, you know what I mean? Like it just, oh, oh he's got that too. He's got that. I didn't know he had that. I thought he could only do this. It just shows his potential. And so I just feel like he's not great at anything yet, but he has the ability to be great at a lot of things, or at least really good at a lot of things, especially defensively. It looked like early on, he was just trying to kind of feel the games out, you know, but as he started getting more comfortable, you know, you saw him become a little more aggressive in the show. Yeah, most definitely, man. Like I said, just, you know, getting to the basket is going to be key for him right now. And for him to be able to do that, uh, get those and one opportunities. It can get the rest of your game going, you know. Right. And before you know it, you're stepping back out to that three point line and you're shooting them threes a little bit more confidently because you got yourself mm -hmm. going. You know, you get into that free throw line, and that's going to be his calling card for right now. You know, until until he can get to that point, that's his calling card. Get into the basket, right. on fouls. You know, uh, just being disruptive out there on the defensive end. Those are going to be his calling cards right now in his young 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 career it's interesting but. too bro because his jumper doesn't look broken it actually it actually looks a lot better than i originally thought coming out of the draft um but to me that's music to my ears to hear that you know coach for vincent was wasting no time you know getting in the lab with him his first day here he said fred is amazing my first day we got in the gym immediately so fred vincent isn't wasting any time he understands the assignment you know what i mean and that was very very encouraging to hear that he's already he's not even letting guys put their luggage down before he get him in the gym i do think with that being said i don't think he's gonna have much of a role this year um but i think his focus for this team for now should just be for me on the defensive end turning defense and offense you know i think if he does that and he just incrementally improves his shooting season over season if he's able to reach that potential he can be one of the best two-way players in the league yeah with me i'm always the person that's going to tell you hey if we take a, a young person i feel like they should start out in the g league you know what i'm saying just get their, their feet wet but obviously where he comes from how much is he really going to learn in the g league you right. know that he right. hasn't already seen already you know what i'm saying so i don't know man trying to find him a spot where he can uh at least get on the court is it's gonna be tough right now with the way the roster is constructed mm -hmm. uh, so like i said in camp in practice his calling card is going to have to be a defensive mindset right now a defensive mindset maybe that can get you on the basketball court you right. never know you know so people get injured things happen true. right now true focus on what you're good at yeah mm -hmm. I, I just think that's where it is right now with ron holland but on the other hand uh we got to talk about clinton <laughs> okay a lot of good flashes <laughs> a lot of good flashes man talk about shooting it. basketball i mean you know like i said a lot of the shots that he were he was taking were uncharacteristic it's not something that he would be shooting out there on the court it would be more mm -hmm. of you know set up shots uh in rhythm things like that um but he he wasn't scared to let it fly at all the yes, ability to push the sure. ball up the, right the ability to push the ball up the court impressive his passing very impressive very impressive uh when it comes to the passing department man so like i said you know he definitely showed a lot of flashes um yeah you know him taking time in the g league i think will benefit him for to sure so going into the into a rhythm you know so it, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle uh Clement. i looked up his numbers uh he averaged 11 points 
Um, seven rebounds, four assists, a steal and a half a block. A game on 42% from the field and 42% from three in 29 minutes per game. And if we're being honest, two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, nobody thought we'd be talking about Bobby Clemens' ascension in the summer league. <laughs> like I, I know I did not for sure. That's the last thing I thought we'd be talking about coming out of summer league. You know what I mean? And that's no slight to him. I just didn't know his game. Um, but what stands out to me about him, bro, is his poise. He's so composed, man. He doesn't get sped up. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He's steady. I like his versatility, too. He can play a lot of different positions. He actually, I saw his draft combine interview, right? And he said that he feels he can play in guard two through four. And he said that he's really comfortable playing guard. And we saw some of that, right? We saw some of his guard skills on display in summer league, bringing the ball up the court, um, initiating offense, directing traffic, stuff like that, making plays. So it'll be interesting to see how Bickerstaff utilizes him. And you can call me crazy, y'all can call me crazy, but I think he's going to be in the rotation this season. Like this season. I don't think he's gonna, he's, I don't think he's gonna need a year. I mean, he was not gonna start or anything like that, but I think post All-Star break, maybe even sooner than that, I think he's going to force his way into the rotation. We gotta keep in mind too, he is 21. You mentioned that King a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So he's played at the pro level for a couple of years now. And I don't think that his NBA transition is gonna take as long as it takes other players. So I'm gonna call it now. I think come 2025, Bobby Clement is going to be in rotation, book it. Speaking on Sasser and what we, you know, was supposed yeah. to be looking for Sasser, which was facilitating pace things like that yeah Gave an example summer league i mean summer league is summer league right we've seen him in real basketball games knock down shots right you know, right, right 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 i'm not really concerned with how many shots he made or missed it is a little concerning that he missed all of them from, right. from out, outside but you know at the end of the day it's simply just go out there run the offense try to get everything in the flow me personally, I didn't really like the job he was doing. Yeah. I don't like them trying to play point guard personally. Yep. I was talking a little bit about how Clintman was wide open this entire summer league and dudes just would not throw the ball to him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Too many times. Too, you know. So like with Sasser, bro, like I I okay, so he got up to a slow start in summer league, right? I know he picked his game up late with the, in the last few games. Um, he got more aggressive, you know, looking for his offense. The, here's the thing for me with Sasser, bro. And what I'm about to say has nothing to do with him. It's more so to do with the roster construction and roster need. It's not about his talent, man, because I, I think he's such a talented player. I just think as far as his role, I, I just think, if anything, he would be more of a depth guy. I don't see him playing a lot of minutes. You know, at this stage, he seems more suited to play the two. And, you know, with the shooting that we just added you know, at the two guard spot with Beasley and Hardaway, I just don't see how he finds consistent minutes, you know, barring, I mean, you know, barring trades or injuries that could always happen. But I just don't see a path really for him this season with what we've added. Yeah, I just want a point guard. Right. You know, the guy behind K. So staggering right now, what we've talked about in, the, in you know, previous episodes, staggering is looking like the way to go for me. Uh, staggering him and Ivy right now looks like the way to go mm -hmm. until we can get a true legit backup points guard. Yep, backup points guard. So yep, hundred yeah, percent. Trust me, it's no slander towards Sasser. Evaluating this roster that we have right now and his role again, Langdon has his guys. He's not a Langdon mm -hmm. guy, right? You know what I'm saying? So finding a role from him for him is going to be interesting. For me like but, you, you know, said man you know if if you know there's always you know possibility of injuries and things like that um so there could be a pathway you know that way i just don't see um like i said it's nothing to do with his talent you know because I, I do think he's a very talented player i just think um there are guys who fill the roles of what we need a little bit better than what he offers right now we'll see we'll see how it plays out did you talk about um jenkins yet I was just on Jenkins when you came back. Okay, uh, man, let's get to it. Trying to find him a role. You know what I'm saying? Two-way guy, right? Uh, Pistons absolutely love him. Yeah. Uh, impressive to summer league. Had his moments. But, again, <laughs> looking at the roster, trying to find him a spot. Trying to find him a spot to get on the court. That's where I'm hung up at. I think that's fair. Just looking at his numbers, 
Um, he averaged about 10 points, three rebounds, four assists, a steal and a block a game on 35% from the field, which isn't great. And 33% from three, which isn't great in about 26 minutes per game. So, you know, those numbers don't look great. I actually didn't realize he shot that low of a percentage from the field and from three. I felt like he shot better than that. But um, aside from the numbers, he was a welcome surprise to, for at least for me. For me with him, I like his ability to be able to play either guard spot. I think he's a pretty good facilitator. He looks to get, you know, others involved first, but I think he's a good enough scorer to still be able to keep defenses honest. And I do want to see his shooting get more consistent, you know, because through those first couple games, I think he shot 50% from the field and 40% from three. And then those numbers dropped to about 35 and 33 overall, respectively. So with that being said, though, I do think that he's proven himself to be an NBA player. But uh, yeah, I definitely do think that when it comes to Jenkins, that he should stick around on this team, even if it isn't in a consistent backup role. I do think he could be a good backup point guard, but I definitely want to keep him on this team. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'll get to win it. It's for my city, and the team coming with me. Headed for the championship, even if the road is long.